Inevitably, every biker will hear a helmet myth at some point in their lives. It seems that bikers can't help but impart some knowledge on their fellow riders, whether or not those fellow bikers have specifically asked for it. But how can we tell fact from fiction and the truth from fiction? Well, you could do well to remember some of the things we are about to say. Number one, helmets do more harm than good. Motorcycle riders and their passengers are legally obligated to wear helmets or other head protection throughout the vast majority of the world. In most cases, yes, but there are a few rare exceptions. It's a common misunderstanding that wearing a helmet actually increases your risk of injury, specifically a broken neck, because the added weight of the head protection makes it more probable that your head will move about after a collision. Motorcycle riders who wear helmets have a far decreased risk of suffering a neck injury while riding, compared to those who do not. Plus, many say that helmets block your vision. This is not the case, and there is no data to back up such an assertion. In fact, helmets improve visibility since they shield the rider's eyes from flying dirt and gravel. The rider's hearing is improved as a result of the reduced wind noise. Moreover, helmets lessen exhaustion due to reduced noise and wind pressure on the head. Number two, loud pipes save lives. Well, the simple answer is that loud pipes actually don't save lives. The primary reason for the existence of loud pipes is the rider's perception of their coolness. For this reason, 99.9% .9 of pipe owners initially purchase their equipment. This is perfectly acceptable behavior. When those neat pipes become a primary means of protection though, problems arise. Earlier this year, researchers in Romania had six different motorcycles hit their rev limiters from behind a parked car, and they found that not even the loudest exhaust systems were drawing attention. You can learn more about how they test here, but please don't fool yourself into thinking that your vehicle's massive, open exhaust system is in any way beneficial to safety or even cool. More proof that the best way to ensure your safety on a motorcycle is with proper training, equipment, and riding habits. Number three, ABS braking isn't safe. For the same reasons that you should exercise caution whenever you throw a leg over a motorcycle you haven't ridden before, you should also be mindful of new computer-controlled rider assists. That being said, if you haven't tried your current motorcycle ABS, you're missing out. The amount of force with which you can use the brakes without losing tire traction will astound you. The technology behind anti-lock brake systems, ABS, has been around for quite some time. This life-saving technology has been around since the 1960s, and it is now standard on everything from touring motorbikes to cutting edge of motorcycle racing. Also, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has discovered that fatalities in motorcycle accidents are 31% fewer when ABS is present, and that insurance claims are 20% lower overall when ABS is present. Number 4. V-Twins have more traction than inline fours. Well, do they? It truly is a matter of opinion. Ask the guy on the GSX R1000 who just got smoked by the guy on the Panagale, and the answer is probably yes. However, experts have long disagreed on whether or not longer pauses between blasts of power allow the back tire to recover its grip. Some people act all gimlet-eyed and smile like Jerry Burgess when they say this, while others believe it's significant. In the early 1990s, when Ducatis were dominating the World Superbike competition and V4 two-stroke 500s were experimenting with the Big Bang firing order in Grand Prix, the concept was initially mooted. It was tough to tell because Ducati had a capacity advantage and Honda had Mick Doohan. It's simple to see the merit in both arguments. If there was more time between pulses to recover, you could hold on more securely without interruption, but you'd be more likely to let go during the power pulses themselves. So an even distribution of force throughout the rubber surface would result in a better grip. Probably more crucial is how the torque from the engine is transmitted to the tire and from the tire to the track. The tire situation would improve if the combustion torque could be smoothed out. Maybe an inline four with a cross-plane crank, a three with a pentagram, or even a five with a pentagram crank is what we need. Number five, don't use front brakes unless you have to. We can't believe we've heard this, as safety experts that we are. However, you would be surprised at how frequent it actually is. In all likelihood, this misconception originated from a misunderstanding in introductory motorcycle safety classes. The front brake on a motorbike accounts for 70% of the total stopping power. The vast majority of your stopping power is concentrated there. 
you can stop many thousand pounds of momentum with simply a press of your hand on those two pads. That's terrifying. When applied incorrectly, the front brake can be quite hazardous. Never use the front brake when the rider's hands are on the handlebars. When you do this, your bike will lean forward and to the side you're turning. If you do this quickly, you'll be on the ground before you can blink your eyes. To lock up the front tires, upset the suspension, or even induce an endo, stabbing or jabbing the front brake is not the only option. The use of brakes should always be gradual and under control. Number six, racing tires are safer than road tires. There is no comparison between racing tires and road tires because they are constructed from different materials and have different characteristics. They're claimed to stick like glue after just one heating cycle and function best when it's very hot. This is safe when the road is dry, but might be disastrous if you're riding in the wet. Because they lack the grooves found on regular street tires, racing tires can't effectively drain water away from the tread. Longevity, stability, and wet weather performance are all improved with a street tire. In addition, road tires provide stable performance throughout a wide range of temperatures because of their superior grip at room temperature. Number seven, buy the bike of your dreams as your first bike. The reasoning goes like this. If you buy the bike of your dreams as your first bike, you'll figure out how to ride it eventually. You only need some hands-on experience. Wrong. Obviously, this depends on your ideal motorcycle, but before dropping a ton of cash on the slickest ride on the market, you should consider your financial situation. Perhaps even more so than the bike itself, the necessary safety equipment is of paramount importance. In addition to the obvious headgear, gloves, boots, and quality riding leathers should be used. When you've settled those issues, you can start thinking about a bike. You shouldn't rush out and buy the bike of your dreams simply because you have your heart set on it. Be sure to do your research before making a purchase so that it is appropriate for your skills. So that is all the time we had today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.